are decorating again in Adirin. Today we are actually working on the Hartman family home. I've done a little bit of this already, I just did it kind of just felt like decorating and I didn't want to record. So you'll see that this part of our house is all done. This room here belongs to Adelard Bellamy, who he's kind of he's a bit complicated. In the family, I, I mentioned it in the jewelry store, he's probably going to be taking over the jewelry store, but he's not actually a Hartman other than his mother married one. Like, that's the extent of his involvement with the actual Hartman family. So he's he's interesting, because he's... Basically, he's, he's frugal, but he's also garish, and he also likes, like, fancy things, so I'm having fun with him. Uh... Right, so this is going to be Charlemagne, and I keep calling him Joshua, I just checked though, his name is Joseph. He is the lovely gentleman who is the patriarch, oh come on, come on, don't, don't, don't do it, okay, thank you. This guy right here, his name is Joseph, I did him dirty, I keep calling him Joshua, probably because the original founder of the Van Alsbergs was named Joshua, and he looked very similar to Joseph, and I didn't realize that till recently. So bedroom for Joseph and Charlemagne. So Charlemagne likes pink and fabric, kind of open spaces, but dark spaces, which is kind of interesting. You don't really think of open and dark going together. Joseph likes green. He also likes fabric. He's a bit dramatic, but he's also traditional. So I can see this being a very stereotypical medieval room, so to speak, with the traditional open, dark, dramatic terms being applied here. I did already choose the wallpaper. I just went with dark floors throughout. I threw a pet bed in here just because Charlemagne is very interested in raising pets. I'm not sure what kind of pet she's going to raise yet, but she, they are going to have pets because she wants to raise 20 puppies or kittens. I'm not sure again what, what, we're, what it's going to be, but yeah. They're both family sims. Charlemagne likes chess. She is above reproach, green thumb. Earthy, which in my game is represented by the eco-friendly trait because it doesn't make sense for me to call it eco-friendly and it weirds me out, but I want to use it. So, and I had Earthy as an option, so I was like, alright, that's the same thing. So that's why you'll see, like, these are technically solar panels, which is cool. And she's also perceptive and a pyromaniac, which is why we have fire kind of all of the lot. Uh, her green thumb's re represented by this. This is just a deco object, but it's really pretty. We also have a bunch of roses. And yeah, the above reproach is also the reason why I was like, it makes sense that she would marry this nobleman. And it wouldn't really come off as like super duper strange to the newer nobility that have been created by Arndt Blumenthal, but also the older no nobility that sided with Arndt, she's not somebody that anybody really sees as a threat or also as like less of a lady or a noblewoman. She's just always really had that about her. So her being in this role of she was a countess, then she was indentured, and now she is the wife of Joseph, who is from a merchant's family, but they're now considered gentry, and he's really pushing for his family to end up with the title of Baron. So she makes sense. She is a logical choice. Maybe it doesn't seem like a logical choice, like, you know, why didn't he pick a noblewoman or, like, someone from the gentry class, but to him, Charlemagne is a noblewoman. She just happened to have some really bad luck, and because she is female, even though Adirin isn't so so crazy about gender roles, okay, throw this on. Like she can kind of get away with. Well, my husband made the decision. I went along with that. She can't really be held accountable, is what I'm going to say. And so that's why she's kind of gotten away with it almost. So I've actually decorated this room once already, and it crashed, and I lost all of it, and I was real, real mad about it for a while, but we are back. We are rebuilding. It's fine. I just don't remember how I did it, because this is an odd shape room, I will say. I think I had like a sideboard here, and I don't remember how I did the door. This space here is like almost their private crafty area, or they're like their own little space away from the family, but... 
guess it, it just really bothers me. But I don't want to use a cheat to make it centered because The Sims 2 does not really enjoy it when you do that. I could put it here and then this is more of an open area. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. I'll recolor the bed in a minute. I'm just plopping stuff down for now. So I want to make sure we've got some nice bedding. Okay, so I don't want this room to be super duper complex. I want to make sure that I represent them well, but they are the Elder Sims who are probably not going to be in their room as much. I don't think I see them both as kind of being more out and about. So they're not homebodies. They're not really going to be you know, vibing in their bedroom. So I do want to give them a dresser. I don't know why family sims make me think of dressers, but eh, that's, that's, it just seems like something that they would like for, you know, old quilts and things like that. They, they want to keep them close, so like having those chests and things. My game today, like it's not making it as mad as it normally does, but it's just, it is feeling itself is what we're going to go with. I want to make sure that I choose something that fits like you know, their traditional thing that they've got going on. That's kind of nice. Do I have it in a different wood tone? not the wood tone that I was hoping for, but I do like that one. Ooh, that one kind of matches. It's nice. That's... I think that tracks. That tracks. Okay. Um... And I think I did not even go... Oh, Joseph is just being done dirty in these videos. I am so sorry, my dude. You're a cool dude. So, <laughs> Joseph is a family sim. Uh... His aspiration is like the architecture career, so I think he's just interested in buildings, in infrastructure, that kind of thing. Which I imagine comes from being part of the merchant class and being part of that family, and that was really important to them for their livelihood. And he was raised that way, so to him it's still important, whereas it may not be as important to the nobility in terms of like well, why do I care where the road goes? I just want there to be a road and I don't want there to be like holes in it. Like that's kind of the extent of their caring. Um, his hobby is tinkering, which his sub hobby is gem cutting, which dovetails really nicely with the Hartman's store. And that's also why I ended up going with the jewelry store for them. I was pretty undecided for a while, which is why I'm glad I didn't have them on my rotation right away, is I just didn't know what to do with them. I knew that I created this special family for Charlemagne which I avoid adding new sims to this neighborhood because there's so many. But at the same time, I didn't want Charlemagne to be indentured forever. I just, I have a soft spot for her. She's not even like a custom created sim by me, but I just really have a soft spot for her. And knowing that Tenby was gonna be reintroduced and that her ex, well, okay, I can't really say ex-husband, but like her first husband, uh, Severin is going to be back on the scene because Tenby has been discovered. Tenby is real and I just I knew that Severin as a character if he came back and his first wife was indentured he would kind of give up his the life that he made for himself after like the rebellion and where they all had to like run and they basically were like yeah we're never going to go back this is our new way this is how we're going to be and he made a new life for himself but if Charlemagne had been indentured, he would have given that up. And he is actually married now to Sia Kenton, who was a former crown princess. And they actually are a really good couple. Like, I really like them together. I enjoy... I think they have a good dynamic, basically. But yeah, he even if he didn't want to, he would have gone back to his first wife and, you know, found a way to save her from being indentured. So her being married to somebody who saved her from that allowed me to keep Severin and Sia together as a couple. And it also gave me a lot of interesting dynamics to play with in general, like with Adelard, who's kind of 
a nobody, but he's not. Like, he's just, he doesn't really have a place, and so I'm really interested to play with him as that type of character. I didn't really have too many of those, but it also gives this family, like, kind of an extra interesting flair because, well, she had to deal with the fact that her former husband didn't die like she thought. He escaped and has been living all this time in the super special fancy woods. And I don't know how Charlemagne is going to feel about that. Charlemagne and Severin were not like a love match, but she really cared for him very deeply and thinking that he died was really hurtful and she also had an affair with her father-in-law like after like during while while she was indentured like she just kind of gave up on life and she had an affair with Zachary Bellamy who was Severin's father and who was her father-in-law people know about it but it's been kept very quiet but I imagine that's gonna bother her a great deal to know that she technically slept with the father and the son while the son was still alive, but she didn't know. I just, I still think it's going to bother her. God, this is such an awkward wall. Like, it's bothering me that this isn't centered, but I also don't want it under the window because there's a freaking mirror on it, but then I, I want it even with the bed, but then I don't. I'm having problems. I'm struggling. Um, you know, right back to Joseph. I completely forgot to continue on with him. Uh, he's a natural cook, a great kisser, but unflirty. He's an angler, which is why we have a pond, and a social butterfly. I imagine he's just one of those people that everybody really likes. He's really enjoyable to be around, he's really fun, he's very kind, and he's very forward-thinking or kind of progressive, like the fact that rather than sell Hartman's and keep the proceedings to help fund, like, being a noble family, he doesn't want that. Like, this is his family, it's very important, so he doesn't want to sell it, but at the same time, like, he knows being loyal to what his family was is not going to progress them, so he wants to leave it behind, and he's found kind of a compromise he can live with, which is giving it to Adelard, and he's just, he's a very interesting sim. He's very selfless, I would say, and I think if Charlemagne would have, you know, said, I want to go, like, now that I know Severin's back alive, I want to be with him, he was my original husband, blah blah blah, honestly, I think Joseph would have let her go. He wouldn't have made a big deal about it, he would have let her go. Because they're not a love match, but they are comfortable with each other, they do like each other as people, and I think it would have it would have been upsetting for him, but he wouldn't have wanted to keep her, you know, from her true love if that's what it was. And I imagine they probably too had a lot of conversations about it once Tenby was revealed to the world as like, hey, lol, we're alive, guys. Just just kidding about that being a dead thing for years. Yeah, I just, again, there was probably a lot of conflict in a lot of the different families over Tenby being discovered, but this family. I don't think it was so much conflict. I think for them it was recognizing that the past is the past. Arndt Blumenthal did pass, like, not a law, but like essentially said, you know what, this is probably going to happen to a lot of people rather than it becoming a problem. I'm just going to say, if you were married before the revolution and you happen to get remarried after because you thought your spouse was dead and they're not, well, they basically kind of have a choice as to who they're going to be with. Like, th there's no repercussions. It's not like, ooh, yes and hers, ah, which that, that really doesn't happen anyways in Adirin. That's not kind of, or it hasn't happened. I don't see them being like, divorce is a sin. Like, I don't even really think divorce exists in this series that I'm aware of. Like, I don't think, yeah, I've never had anybody get divorced. So I guess I just haven't thought about it. I don't think divorce is like a thing, but like, there's also not like a ton of shame. I don't know. I'm just rambling. I'm really excited because I watched all of the Wheel of Time episodes. I've watched them twice now. I get to watch them again tomorrow. I love them so much, like an unhealthy amount. And it does bother me that there's like book purists out there that are like pitching a fit because, oh my God, it's not a play by play by play of the book. 
they changed things, they did this, and I'm like, okay, but Robert Jordan's wife, Harriet, was involved with this. She was there. Like, I don't see her as a person who would let her husband's legacy be quote-unquote tarnished or taken in a direction that he wouldn't have been comfortable with. And Brandon Sanderson also has been involved in production. They've been able to give their feedback. They are probably, besides Robert Jordan, the closest people we have to like be the authority on that. And I know that Brandon Sanderson on Reddit has talked about different things that he's maybe not super thrilled to have, like, with that have happened, but for the most part, like, the, ch the choices that were made, the changes that were made, I feel like were necessary, not only to get a reach out to, like, a wider audience, but also because so much of the book is, or book, books, plural, it's very internal. Like, I've been doing a reread recently, and so much of it is internal like we're reading their what they're thinking we're seeing their perspective and that is incredibly difficult to show in a tv show like to portray that you can't you just you really can't without having like some weird narrator monologue and like internally going on in their head and things like that like it's just not feasible and it, i don't think it would have worked so they made some changes yes do I love every single change they made? No. But I'm still really happy with the show. I'm really happy with the direction they've taken on a lot of things. And I'm not gonna just sit there and hate it just because it's not what my perfect ideal Wheel of Time show would have been. So it's really frustrating for me to have seen people taking that, like, approach. Like, come on guys, let's just be, hold on. I don't have a cheat on that I want. But yeah, like, for me, I think it's good. I am appreciating it for what it is. You can't just expect a book of that size and just everything about it. Like, you just can't expect that you're going to get that perfect play by play by play of everything that happens. And uh, yeah, I'm super excited about it. I kind of, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of want to build a Wheel of Time world again in The Sims. I've wanted to on and off throughout the years, but I always get stuck of like, okay, well, when is this taking place? And so, I don't know, I'm still toying with that just because like I said, I love the Wheel of Time. I'm a huge nerd about it. It would bring me joy. What if I, is this better? No, that's worse. It would bring me a lot of joy to have it in The Sims, but I wouldn't probably play it. It would be more building. But if you guys are interested in those types of like videos, if you want to see me create the Wheel of Time Sims like in the books versus how they turned out in the show, definitely let me know in the comments below. I'm not gonna lie, I might do it anyways, but I'm curious if there's any interest in it, if you guys have seen the show. Because the more people that watch it, the happier I am, because it means it's more likely to be you know, renewed for season upon season upon season. We've already got three. I want all of the seasons. I want every season possible. That said, I still, as you can tell, I'm struggling with this room. Struggling. The struggle is real. That's why I'm talking about Wheel of Time instead, because I don't struggle with talking about Wheel of Time. I struggle with this room. It's just awkwardly shaped is, is my issue, I think. It's just not... the window. What if I take out the window and put smaller windows in? Does that make it better or is that going to make it worse? Let's find out. Okay, so first, one there. What if I did one, what if I did windows here? So it was bothering me. I know they block it a little bit, but it was bothering, bothering, oh my gosh, bothering me over there, but let's try it over here. but then I'm doing my notorious corner thing that I always do, which is box in an awkward corner. What if I... Is that awkward? It's at an angle, is it less awkward? Need to be there. there we go. I mean, then I'm not quite boxing that corner off, but it's still there. It's still... 
being a corner. Hello, fat cat. No, nope. you know, we've had minimal animal interruptions and I was gonna jinx it and he knew. I've been new. I've been new. All right, I think I'm pretty happy with this room. I'm not gonna over decorate it because again, I just don't see them being people who are in their room all the time. Really quickly, I want to recolor the bedding. I don't know if I wanna go with green or pink. I feel like green with pink bedding, is, or not pink bedding, with pink like blankets. It's so funny, like this flower pattern, and I've heard other Sims say it's for like the default, whatever the default color is, no matter what Sims game you're in, becomes almost unusable for people because it's like the default, oh I, it's undone, I haven't done it, it's like leaving a bare concrete floor. I can never use that floral blanket, but you know what, I think it, I think it actually works here because it is traditional she does like pink he likes green I think I should leave it alone I'm gonna change this front pillow just because it's gross looking with my default but what if I did it what if I tried to be bold I love that bold is leaving the original color on my Jonesy blanket but you know to each his own I'm not that bold not that bold of human, must be said. I do want a rug. Am I just gonna do this rug? Oh, it's kinda gross looking though. Yeah, I guess it's not bad. I always think it's a lot more stained than it is. Is it too much? Yeah, no. It's not the right color. A lot of these are very red. Also, I'm very curious if you guys can hear the rumble purr of the cat right now. I don't know why that idea is incredibly funny to me in my head, but if you can, that is Fat Cat. Fat Cat has decided that we need to be involved, and we are currently lying on top of my arm while I try to do this last bit of decorating, because I can't get through a single recording without somebody being involved. Man, maybe that's, that's not going to replace for a rug. I think I'm not going to do it. Okay, so this is going to be Charlemagne and Joseph's room. I hope you enjoyed listening to me ramble. I know it's not my usual overdone, overblown thing. I might add some little bits and bobs, but we're at 22 minutes because I've just been rambling incessantly. Up next... Oh, I was going to put a pet bed. That's right. Is that... I think that's fine. It's not, it's not my normal corner thing. I mean, it is, but it doesn't look like it. And my normal corner thing for people who don't know is me lining things up on one wall, lining things up on another wall, and then just not being able to put anything in the corner but a plant. Because that's how I roll. We're not going to touch it. We're not going to touch it. So I think I'm actually going to be recording a couple of these. I would like to finish up at least this room, bathroom, some of it, because these guys are next up on my rotation, and I would like to play them. I'm also very excited to play them, especially Everilda. I think she's so stunning. So yeah, thank you guys so much for joining me. As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, what have you, if you just are curious about something I did or a particular choice I made, definitely leave those down below and I will see you in the next one.